Yo, what is up guys? It's the Goblin and welcome back to another Fortnite Battle Royale tips and tricks video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to get more kills in Fortnite, but not only how to get more kills, because to get more kills, you obviously got to take on more fights. We're going to talk about how to get more kills and how to also still win the game by setting a goal and by thinking about early, mid, and late game, planning it all out and being able to make sure you get the kills amount you want, a high amount of kills, whatever your goal is, and still win games consistently because everyone wants a little bit of both you want to be able to win games but you don't want to get one kill wins and you don't want to get 10 kill games where you're dying in second every time so you want to have a little blend of both and that's what we're going to talk about in tonight's video if you guys could smack a like on this thing i would very very much appreciate that let's go ahead and go for 438 likes that would be amazing if we could crack that smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and hit that notification bell so you guys can have a chance to be first on all of my future videos i really really do appreciate everyone coming from the notification squad i see you down in the comments comments on every video all the people coming early I really really do appreciate it so shout out to all of you all right let's talk about this and let's get right into it so first of all we're talking about how to get kills and win the game now first of all you have to understand the risk reward of going for kills what do you really get what do you lose and what do you gain by going for a kill and of course it depends on the different scenarios and the different situations the main thing people like when getting kills is of course you're getting the stat the plus one on the kill but how does that kill or taking that fight whether you obviously if you lose it you're out of the game so once you win that fight what does that do and how does that affect the rest of the game and i think that's something that really needs to be thought about so what i mean by this is why do you want to go for kills they don't in certain points of the game early to mid game upgrading weapons or you, you have to get a kill for mats or for shields there is a benefit to it but what I mean by this is each kill is only worth one. So whether it's a guy sitting literally in a corner that I put a trap on and he has no idea what he's doing and he walks over it, or whether I 1v1 against Tifu and beat him with 30 people left and I have one HP left and no materials, it's still all worth one kill at the end of the day. Of course, fighting the good player, the Tifu player, is going to make you better than putting the trap on the other player, but it's all worth one kill. And that's what I talk about risk reward. And that's why we're going to talk a lot about mid early or the early mid and late games and when you should be going for these kills and what you should be looking for in different scenarios for to, to get kills but also to stay alive so first thing i would say is setting a kill goal i think this is so important because if you or you could just basically play reckless and say i'm going for every fight and then hope i win but by doing that you're not going to get win as consistently setting a goal whether the goal is to go for a five kill win a 10 kill win a 15 kill win you have to set one that's reasonable to yourself obviously if you consistently get three kill wins and you want to improve maybe try to go for a five kill win try to go for seven kills stuff like that if getting 10 kills is no problem to you but you never seem to get more than that then i think these kills or these tips can help you take it to the next level of 15 but it's all about setting those goals and knowing about risk reward knowing okay i'm gonna push this player and i'm gonna go for this kill for his loot but i also could lose stuff because of that i think that is very very important so let's break it down early game mid game and then late game early game i call the quick kills early game is one of the best now of course if you're going for let's say a like a 10 kill solo win like I get in this gameplay here I got a 10 kill solo win out of fatal fields so a lot of my kills came in the mid to late game however I don't think that's the easiest way to get a lot of kills honestly it's the easy the an easier way is to hot drop or to drop at like Tilted Towers or a populated location. And I call this the early game quick pickups with the double S. So as soon as you land, you should be looking for double S, shotguns and shields. Once you get those two, you can go absolutely ham on players who maybe aren't in the better, as good as of, of a position as you, or you're just a better player than them. Early game, you can get quite a few kills because of the fact that people don't have as many materials. People don't have as many weapons. People don't have as much health. And it's a lot easier to take down players uh you know you could take down three or four players real quick when mid to late game that's usually not going to happen because people are going to have a thousand mats for defense early game they don't have them as much so my tip for early game to, to getting um kills and stacking up your kills in the early game of course because if you die in early game it's not that bad because you didn't invest that much time into the game you're just sent back to the lobby you, you learned your lesson and then you can go back and do it again right so it's not as bad as losing in second place at least in my opinion it's not um just because if you invest all all that time and then you get second place that's one of the worst but basically 
early game, shotguns and shields, and also materials. A lot of people know about the shotguns and shields, but forget to farm. And this is one thing that's been getting me killed lately, but I think that if you literally just smack the inside of houses, smack a lot of stuff, smack trees as you're walking by, get up to a couple hundred materials within the first few minutes of the game, most players aren't smart enough to do that. That gives you a huge advantage. Go on the offense early game. If you're looking for a high kill gameplay, you'll notice on most high kill gameplays, they land in a populated location, they get started early and get a couple freebies in the early game. That's what I think is really, really important to focus on. Mid game is where it gets more intense and more random, I guess you could say, or more like you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if there's going to be zero players you're going to find in the mid game or all 20 of them are going to be in Salty Springs right on top of you and you're going to be in the basement trying to build and defend. You don't know what's going to happen. The early game, you know sort of where people are going to drop based on the bus route and the bad thing of the early game, the, the good stuff of the early game, like I talked about, you can get quick kills. The bad thing is that the RNG of the loot and chest can kind of screw you over. With mid game, the great thing about mid game is there's a couple things. Number one, drops. Drops show on the map now. And I'm talking about the supply drops, the care packages, whatever you want to call them. Those show on the map. So by going to those, you can find fights with players. And usually those fights are nice because even if once you win that fight, even if you take damage, sometimes that uh, drop will have some good extra heals for you. To, you, of course, should be carrying heal, heals as well. Um, like I say, with setting a plan, if your goal is to get 10 kills and you have two kills, you should be carrying double heals because you're going to have to go super duper aggressive from that point on if you already have nine kills maybe you want to go with a single one and play a little bit safer you know what i mean that's why i think having a plan is uh, important so mid game drops is where you can find a lot of kills and third partying and moving storms now third partying is pretty self-explanatory this is where you can pick up a load of kills just like in the early game where it's easy to kill people because they don't have as much health or shield or as much shield or mats or whatever. In the mid game, whenever two people are fighting, they're usually pretty weak. And because of the rule set now, where it's really, really easy to third party because if, if they win a fight or um, they, they don't get any extra heals, they don't get the 50, the 50 healed uh, per, per kill or shield, they don't get extra materials. It's basically a lot easier to third party in this current set, which is good and bad. So third partying is great. If you go aggressive, as soon as you hear two people fighting, you should be going straight for that so you have a chance at picking off both of the kills if you want to go for high kills number one tip a lot of people if you want to play it safer you can wait till the two players fight one player kills the other player in the kill feed and then you can approach and catch them when they're vulnerable but that all depends and that's another thing where it's risk reward of what you want to plan it with so mid game i think that it's more random because you don't know what you're going to find but stuff that you should look for are drops to, to just grab those fight around and get the extra heals third party and whenever you see a bunch of builds happening or you hear any sort of stuff, go over and at least check it out because there's a lot of freebie kills you can pick up by third party game or moving storms. Moving storms are also great. A lot of players love to sort of camp out or play for late game, but when the storms are moving and you can sort of tell early, like based on the way it's moving, the first two storms, you can tell, okay, this is going to be one that's going to push us all the way to sunny steps or something like that, you know? In those sort of sort of zones, uh, my highest kill solo win was a 21 kill solo win, and it was one that I started in Tilt the Towers, and it pushed all the way way out to like Tomato, and I think it ended in like Wailing Woods or whatever back when when Wailing was still in. So that's basically one where the zone's going to be pushing you. Moving storms are very key because people want to fight quicker because they know that the storm's coming. You can take advantage of that if you're a good player, and you can also just catch players on the left of the right of you flying all over the place. Moving storms makes people get active, and if you you have one of those storms in your lobby you're going to have a, a lot higher chance at a high kill gameplay uh, in the mid game but also be sure to make sure that you are getting the win right and that's what this video is all about so what are the bad things that can happen in the mid game number one you can just get simply overrun you can just be in a bad position run out of materials and there could be four or five enemies that show up that's risks that you take in the mid game like i said third partying is so easy and it's a great way to stack kills it's also the same way other players can do it to you right and that's only fair but that is something you definitely need to watch for and that's where i talk about risk reward and setting a goal so if you see two players on if you're third part in a fight and you get into that fight and both the players are building absolutely crazy, that's where maybe you're like, okay, I'm going to turtle. I'm going to let these two fight it out. And then I'm going to show up for the third party after. And th then if you show up and the two players are not building at all, they have no idea what they're doing. That's one where you want to take advantage and get those two kills. So even it doesn't matter if the player is the worst player or the best player in, in the world, they're still worth one kill. And playing it smart based on that is how you're able to stack kills and also get the win, right? If that makes sense. Now, when it comes into the late game late game you can also stack quite a few kills just because there's usually quite a few people and the zones are quite small so 
Late game rotators slash freebies is what I wrote down in my notes. Now, rotators is easy. I talk about rotating early. Now, it, it's it's easier said than done because you want to rotate early, but you also don't want to get sandwiched, right? But if you've rotated early, if you're up at a big metal base, you see the players all rotating, trying to run up a mountain or, you know, whatever. They didn't rotate early. Those shots are easy for you. And as long as you cover your sides and you're, you're not poking too long to get sniped or something like that, that is definitely a way to get a lot of kills on late game rotators. The other thing I think you can get a lot of kills on late game is is freebies and what freebies are are basically third party in fights but in late game because the storm is moving so quick it's even crazier than mid game it's everything app that i was just talking about amplified where sometimes you'll catch players where it's like okay two bullets free kill there three bullets free kill here and you can just start like snowballing and stacking kills in the late game if you have a zone where for example it goes up to a mountain you're already on there so for late game getting kills it's all about your positioning really and uh being smart about it so if there's a mountain if there's any sort of high ground that may possibly be in that next zone you probably would want to claim that and just play the percentage percentages based on that now late game usually they're going to be decent players just statistically of course there's probably uh, there's going to be some hider some bad player some average player some great players but the players that make it to the end of the game on a consistent basis are usually quite better than the average player in the game right and the thing with that is it, it's it's going to be a little bit harder late game so the fights you got to be prepared and you got to really know that the players could be tough and you never know what you're going to come up against. So whenever I see two people left, or it's a 1v1, you don't know what to expect. I just try to put myself in the best situation, get the most amount of mats, and be ready for that. Uh, storm advantage, also another key. Like I said, to catch people rotating, storm advantage is so huge in that late game. But it also is important in the mid game. With If you're close to the storm and they have to run to you to get to the storm, you have the advantage on them. And you can take advantage of that with a moving storm and stack kills. So at the end of the day, all these tips are things to look out for and things that are good things to take advantage of and things to watch out for so you can stay alive because the, in the at the end of the day everyone wants to get a high kill gameplay or a good amount of kills that to their plan and also get the victory royale on a consistent basis and i think these tips and tricks should be able to help you guys out with it and teach you guys really stuff to look for early mid and late and uh, for sure setting those goals dropping in on a hot drop or if you want to play a little bit slower if your goal is a little bit lower of kills if it's like you know if your goal is, is 10 kills or less you can pretty much drop wherever uh not wherever, but somewhere mid sort of level drop. But if your goal is 15 or 20 bomb, you got to be hot dropping. You got to be basically going tilted pretty much every single time or whatever the hot drop is. And if your goal is to get a three kill win, you can be dropping junk junction or wherever and camping into late game because in late game, if you use those tips that I talk about, you could uh, stack a couple kills just off that. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Drop a like, subscribe. I hope this would help you guys out on getting uh, more kills and still winning consistently. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. And that's about it. I'm out. Peace.